After applying the glue, I let the board sit in the clamps for about 45 minutes. And I then came back and removed the majority of the glue squeeze out, which was still soft enough to remove easily, but not runny. And after sitting in the clamps overnight, this is what we have. Now, no matter how hard you try, you're always going to have a very slight amount of unevenness in the boards at the glue line. So the first thing we're going to want to do before we do the final dimensioning of this is to level this out, reflatten this face. Now, the better job that we did initially flattening and squaring all of these boards, the less work we should have to do to reflatten this face. Ultimately, we really should not have to remove a lot of material from the reference face. I'm going to check everything with my winding sticks because I do want to be sure that I don't have any twist in the board. Because if I do, that's going to have to be removed before we plane this to final thickness because we don't want to transfer that twist to the second face when we plane it to thickness. This board just seems to have a very slight hump in the middle and that's just due to the unevenness of clamping. So as this is taken down nice and flat again, that should come out easily. So this isn't perfectly glass smooth yet. I'll finish up the, the make pretty part of it at the end before we put the finish on. But it's flat and it's free of twist. So once I get to this point, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is to saw it to rough length or saw it to finish length, I should say. So by sawing this to length now, I'll give myself a nice clean end that I can use to have a marking gauge line to gauge my thickness. And also by taking an inch or so off of either end, it's also going to give me a little bit less to plane. So I'll start by making sure that this edge is generally straight and square. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't a joinery edge. I just want to get it generally straight so that I can use this edge to lay out the square cuts for my ends. I can now reference a square off of this edge to lay out a generally square end cut. Now if you took my handsaw foundations course, you'll recognize this as a second class saw cut. Ultimately, we want this finished cut on the end to be smooth and clean, but it doesn't have to be dead perfect because again, it's not a joinery surface. We just want it to look nice. Just like when we were planing the boards to width, if I wanted this board to be a specific thickness, I'd use a ruler to set my marking gauge. However, I personally don't care what the numerical value of the thickness of the final cutting board is. This happens to be the thinnest area of the board as it stands now. So what I did was set my marking gauge to that thickness and then scribe that thickness on all four sides. And that's my gauge line that I'll plane to. To plane the final thickness, I'm going to start with my jack plane and I'm going to plane across the grain. It's a lot less work to plane across the grain than it is to plane along the grain. And I can watch my gauge line and see where I have really high spots and try to focus on those. The other thing that planing across the grain allows me to do is that I can plane in both directions. So I can plane from this side, 
but I can also turn the board around and plane from this side. By planing from the edges towards the middle, I don't plane off the far edge and take the chance of the blade catching in that edge and tearing out a big chunk of wood. Now my goal is going to be to plane down as close to the gauge line as I can, but I still want to leave the line. I want to leave enough material that I can clean it up with my smoothing plane and make it nice and flat. And if you didn't get these boards all to a close thickness before you glued things up, you could be in for a little bit of work here. One thing I want to make sure is that I don't create a hump in the middle. So even though I have gauge lines, I am going to check because the center is quite far from the gauge lines. If anything, I want it to be slightly hollow in the center, especially if I'm not planning to put feet on the board. If you're planning to put some type of rubber feet on here, then uh, you can get away with a little hump. But if you're just going to sit this flat on the countertop, you really don't want this hump. You want a little hollow. The other thing to consider is whether you want to smooth this bottom surface or leave it off the jack plane. If you're going to put feet on this and if you're never going to see the bottom surface, you could just leave it like this. A lot of period tabletops and things like that have this type of textured surface on the underside that doesn't show. But if you do want this to be nice and flat, once you get close to your gauge line, then we'll switch over to the smooth plane and take out the jack plane marks. With the two faces planed, all that's left to do is a bit of cleanup. So with a freshly sharpened blade in my smoothing plane, I'll start by cleaning up the ends of the board. Planing end grain requires a very sharp blade. You also want to try to plane from the end to the middle and not plane off the far edge. If you plane off the far edge, you could end up grabbing the grain on the edge of the board and tearing out a big chunk. Also, by skewing the plane at an angle, rather than pushing it straight into the wood, when you skew, the cut will be much easier. And you'll also get a much nicer finish on the end grain. Now that the ends are plain nice and smooth, I want to size the board to its final width. This is going to remove any minor splintering or chipping that may have gotten as a result of planing the ends. And I want to start by getting one edge nice and flat. To mark the final width of the board, you can use a large panel gauge like this if you have one, or you can just use a ruler, make a mark at either end and connect them with a straight edge. Now if you need to take off a significant amount like I do here, probably about 5 eighths of an inch, you can saw it first and then plane it. If not, you can just go straight to plane in that edge. So now the last thing that I want to do is soften all of the corners. When you hand plane two adjacent edges like this, you create a corner that's sharp enough to cut you. 
And that sharp corner is also very fragile. So to prevent it from breaking off, it's best to round it or chamfer it over. So to soften the corners, I'm planing a small chamfer. And I just do this by eye, judging the size. But when you're planing across on the end grain like this, you need to hold the plane at kind of a skew. And as you push the plane forward, you also want to push it up. So you're moving it in two directions, this way and this way at the same time. And that's to make sure you're getting a nice clean cut on this corner and not breaking off chips. So I'll do the ends first. Once the ends are planed, then I'll plane a matching chamfer on the long grain. And you want to watch your grain direction here to make sure you're planing with the grain to avoid tear out. Now you can sand your cutting board before you apply finish, but I'm really happy with the hand plane finish on this piece, so I'm going to leave it alone. I think the finish will really make it glow.